What is up, you fart-sniffing skidmark lickers? It's your boy, Jordan. And as you can see, finally with a fresh cut, back to being uh, at least bald everywhere instead of just bald on top, and happy for it, because goddamn does this weather feel good. I don't know how y'all feel about, you know, heat versus cold and all that, but I was born in the wrong state. Uh, I absolutely love the cold, and we finally got a cold Christmas, and I'm thankful for it. I hope you all had a great Christmas. I hope you and your families did. Hope you enjoyed it, whether you celebrate it religiously or whether you just celebrate it for presents and corporate greed. Either way, it's an awesome holiday. So hope you had a good one. And here's to 2023, right? 2022 has been a mixed bag, uh, both personally uh, and in football and just all over the place. Been a very very odd football year, at least in my opinion. Um, I can't remember a year that, and I feel like I keep saying this, but uh, it, I can't remember a year that just went this screwy, this odd, uh, with so many different players and teams versus expectations and all these different things. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't remember anything like this before, um, especially with how many teams kind of exceeded expectations or fell short of them. Um and that's in both fantasy and, and, you know, realistically, you know, we all thought we had a chance going into it. Obviously, we didn't. Um, and, you know, learning that the hard way kind of sucks. But until you're out of it, you think you're still in it. Right. And a lot of teams in our in our league this year turned some years around from the past um, or maintained. So we got a little bit mix of both. And I think that's really cool. It shows uh, really what the league can do and, and what the league is designed for, which is. Anything can fucking happen. You can maintain, you could have a dynasty, you could keep it up and kind of fluctuate, you could be middle of the pack for a little bit, you could go back and forth, um, you know, you could turn a year around, you could have a flop after a good year. All that shit happens because it's all to chance and it's just a matter of where you fall in that pecking order, right? So, that being said, let's get into it because this was semifinal week, now we're into championship week. And I really look forward to this, not just because it's the shortest video I have to do, really, easiest one to prepare for, but we got to love the Super Bowl, right? I mean, we love the Super Bowl, um, love championships, especially in football, winner go home, winner take all, um, all that type of stuff is, is the best. That's why we do this. That's why we look forward to it. It's bittersweet because it's the last game of the year, obviously, same with real football. The Super Bowl is the last game of the year, but... We got to go through it, and then we look forward to the next year. We look forward to new leagues, like with Dynasty League coming up, getting that kicked off, uh, getting some things situated, preparing for next year. If you're smart, if you give a shit about winning in fantasy, you realize that you don't just pay attention one month before the draft. There are loads of videos, podcasts, magazines, articles, all these things, stuff that's happening in the playoffs matters, um, you know, in the real NFL playoffs matter. You got to pay attention to the off-season drama, uh, free agents, drafting, all that stuff. It's really going to become even more important in the Dynasty League. So, let's get into it. What happened this past week? Well, not really any close games again. I'm hoping that it's a sign that it's uh, gearing up towards a nail-biter of a Super Bowl. Uh, but, we don't really know because so far it's been blowout after blowout. Uh, first up, Manny, 168.5 over Sam, 115. Unfortunately, Sam, uh, you know, he took the first seed, and in his first game, he was one and done, um, but it was to a hell of an opponent. Um, his team just didn't pull up this week. Uh, you know, unfortunately, he had Diggs, who normally would put up monster numbers if it was anywhere else but the Windy City, uh, with the wind and the cold and all that shit. Uh, that made it tough. Uh, Manny only had two people in single digits. Uh, Sam had five, and really, you know, there was a really good uh, parallel between both games here. I mean, they both were kind of blowouts. Um, you know, both had similar in regards to why they lost, why they won. In this case, the difference was at running back and flex. Same with the other game that we'll get into here. Uh, but Manny had a 54-9 to edge at running back. That's your game, folks. Now, flex also played a part. Because Sam had a total of 35 points from three flex players. Manny got 36 from TJ Hawkinson. And then got a couple more to boot on top of that. So uh, that's pretty much your game right there. When you have one player outscore a whole other position. 
And then you have a blowout at one position, which at running back, when you get a blowout, it can really suck because you can have running backs get single digits like Sam's did, unfortunately, four and five. And then you can have them go off for 20 plus like uh, Mandy did with James Conner and Saquon Barkley peaking at the right time. Rinse, wash, repeat. It's another Manny victory. So, congrats to Manny. Sam, you had a great fucking year, man. And uh, it was cool seeing you go for the repeat. Uh, you're going to have to go back to the drawing board, unfortunately. Uh, but really happy for you, man. You really had a good year, especially after the Super Bowl. It's easy to have a letdown. Um, it's, it's real, even though it's totally different from the real NFL. As far as, you know, keeping the team together, it's a redraft league with a keeper. But you had a valuable keeper. You kept your team up the whole year. Fortunately, it just didn't come down to, you know, it, it didn't really come down to your keeper, Cooper Cup, because uh, he was out. Diggs kind of underperformed. Justin Jefferson did his, but unfortunately, it wasn't enough for you. But good luck in the third place game, because you do you still do have someone to play for. And you're playing your brother. And, you know, you know, you got to have some bragging rights there, right? So, next up, Saeed takes it versus Gus. Both brothers lost, unfortunately, here. Seed had two players in single digits. Gus had four. Again, that parallel. Sam had five in single digits. Gus had four. Manny and Seed both had two each. Um, 158 to 121 and a half. A little bit of a closer game on each end. The difference was, again, running back and flex. Running back, edge to Saeed, 47 to 26. That's 21 points right there. Flex, 35 and a half to 25. That's another 10 and a half points right there. Add it together. There you go. So he takes it. Gus, as the top wild card, uh, made a strong push, made a strong run, had a great year in a tough division, um, but it was not meant to be an inter or intra division uh, matchup for the Super Bowl, at least this year. So what do we have, folks? It is Super Bowl 13. That's right. 13 years in, it is Super Bowl 13. And it is Manny at Saheed. Saheed has the home field advantage of five points to start. So let's do a tail of the tape. I'm going to go down in detail, and then we'll go over real quick the third place and the dumpster diving D-bag championship. I don't even know if you can call it a championship, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we don't deserve it to be called a championship. And then I'm going to go over some interesting stuff for past Super Bowls. So hang tight. Super Bowl 13, tail of the tape. Manny versus Saheed. Manny is 2-0 and in Super Bowls. Saheed is 1-0. All right, both undefeated. One of those is going to come to an end. Last championship, Manny had his in 2020, just two years ago. Uh, last championship for Saheed, 2014. Now, Saheed has been in the league longer, technically, uh, than Manny, um, at least in regards to when he got in the league. But both of them actually have the same amount of time uh, with a team. Uh, so he took a little bit of a sabbatical um, once he after he entered the league he had a three years um, and he you know took a couple years off came back and he's been uh, you know improving and having kind of back and forth ever since uh, Manny started basically I think seven years ago now and he's been kicking ass ever since he's been in this league so let's go through it uh, the record this year Right now, it's kind of, it reminds me of the records from, you know, real NFL from a couple years ago. 10-6 and six for Manny, got in as a wild card. Uh, he was the he was third in his division, so he did not win the champions division. He didn't even get second, but he got the sixth seed, which uh, basically would have been the end of the top half, but there was a seventh seed. Carlos snuck in there, but didn't do anything. Uh, he got sixth seed. He had to play the three seed, uh, and he had to beat him. And then he had to move on and play Sam, the top seed. So he has had a tough road. He's had to play the top seed in each way. He had to play Jeff in the first round. And then he had to play Sam. And now he gets to play Saheed. So he will have to go through the top three seeds if he is to win, uh, which has happened before. These things have happened. Happened to me. It's happened to others before. Wild cards have gone on to win. Actually, we've had a seven seed win. It Gus did that way back when, when we had eight seeds get in the playoffs. So, it is possible, all right? Um, on the other end, Saheed, he had a hell of a year, 13-3. and three, Best record in the league now that Sam has lost out. 13-3, um, and three, uh, he was 11-3 and three in the regular season versus Manny was 8-6. and six. Power rankings, Saheed ended the year at number one. Manny ended at number five. Remember, power rankings was uh, your scoring, what you have control over, essentially. You don't have control over points scored against you, so it was points scored. 
uh, uh, Sahid was number one, Manny number five. They did play one time this year. That was way back in week eight. It was a pretty decisive victory. It was a 15, basically a 14 and a half, 15 point win for Sahid, 137 to 122 and a half. Since that date, they have identical records. They are both six and two. And it's funny, again, mirror images of each other, reciprocals, however you want to say it. Uh, right after that game that they played against each other, that seed won, he then lost two, and he hasn't lost since. He went 0-2 and, and then went 6-0, and 0, all right? Uh, for Manny, after that loss, he had two wins in a row, and then he had a loss-win-loss and then went 3-0, and 0, which has gotten him to this game. So they're both 6-2 and two since week eight. What about their recent history? This is where we get into the years that they've been in the league. Manny has been in the league every year since the past, uh, well, this would be seven years, I believe every year since the past six years before that. Uh, so his record in finishes starting last year and counting backwards is third, first, fourth, third, first, third. Yes, that's right. His worst finish is fourth. This motherfucker is a genius. We gotta stop this bitch. God damn it, Manny. Um, but anyway, what does that equal? He has an average of two and a half uh, as a finish. So basically, he averages a finish between second and third, meaning that he's making money every single year from this league. Again, we got to put a stop to this shit. And, and the thing is, is that, you know, Manny is a shrewd owner. He makes good pickups. But the main thing that he's done well, because he hasn't made a whole bunch of huge moves. I mean, he's made shrewd moves, made good ones when he needed to. He traded for Saquon from Alex. Uh, but overall, he has been one that tends to stick with his team a little bit more than others who trade a little bit more during the season. So he drafts well, he manages well throughout the year, and lo and behold, his worst, fin worst finish is fourth. He's won twice, and now he's looking for a third championship and to be the first to three and easily, by far, uh, the, the most in control of their dynasty. All right? On Sahid's side, he has played, this is his seventh year in the league as well. Uh, he started way back in 2014. He actually won the league in his first year. Uh, and he went third place after that, then sixth place. Then he took two years off, came back. He had a co-owner with Eric. He finished sixth, then seventh. Last year, he was last. He was 12th. His average over the years that he has played is 5.8. So he finishes between 5th and 6th on average, which still isn't bad. That's a playoff team, right? So what is the line right now for their, uh, for their uh, game coming up? Well, this is where I found it interesting. Uh, it's shaping up to be a close game. Um, he is favored by, or I'm sorry, Manny, without the 5-point advantage, is favored by just over 2, 2.3. With the five-point advantage that Sahid gets, he is favored. Sahid is favored by 2.7. So that home field advantage may come down to it. And that is what got me thinking about the extra Super Bowl information I want to go over. Uh, but before I do, let's just take a quick look at the third place game. Again, not devoting too much time to this because we devote time to championships. Uh, but important game nonetheless. We made the change a couple years ago. Gus at Sam. Winner gets some money. Uh, loser gets fourth place, and that's it. Um, the Dumpster Diving Douchebags, or D-Bags, tournament is about to conclude. The winner of the game between me and Hector gets their choice of pick in next year's draft. I have one spot left to fill in, but right now I am looking to lose by 37 points, according to ESPN, and that's with the five points factored in. So, like I said, uh, the projection of this being an extremely close game, coming down possibly to... Uh, home field advantage got me thinking a little bit about past Super Bowls and what are our closest Super Bowls. I think I've gone back in the past and ranked like the best Super Bowls and we've kind of gone over this, but we haven't fully gone over some of the closest Super Bowls, I don't think, or ranked those. And if I have and I've done this already, you probably forgot just like I did. So fucking deal with it. So I'm going to go in reverse order from the biggest blowouts in our Super Bowls history through our league to our closest one. And there are some things that I think may surprise you. I'm not going to go through all the scores or matchups, but I'll give you the winner, give you the point spread or, you know, the difference between the winning and losing team. Um, I do have the scores for the biggest blowout and for the closest game, however. So, the biggest blowout, yours truly. Yes, it would be me. 
And I do not mean that I had the biggest blowout. I got blown out by the most or the biggest amount. This was back in Super Bowl six. This is when Kyle, who said he did like that, uh, got his one and only championship so far in the highest scoring Super Bowl that we've had, 222.9 to 157.19. My team scored well. I had a hot team, but fuck his team went off in that uh, in that Super Bowl. 222.9. Uh, it still might be a record for most points scored. I think we might have exceeded it in the regular season, maybe in the 230s or high 220s. Uh, but that is definitely up in the top five of scores ever in this league, and he got it at the right time. So biggest blowout ever was Super Bowl six with almost 66 points between us, 65.76 points between us. Next up, Sam. Last year, he got the biggest blowout uh, of his, uh, or the second biggest blowout in Super Bowl history when he got his first Super Bowl last year. After that, it is then me and then Manny back to back. Me back to back with Super Bowl nine and Super Bowl seven. Um, again, Sam's Super Bowl was uh, a 62 and a half point game. The 10th uh, was, or Super Bowl nine, which comes in 10th as far as the spread, was a 51 point spread. Then Super Bowl seven was 41.17. Again, that was my victory uh, in Super Bowl seven. Then Manny comes in. Manny has had blowouts himself in Super Bowl eight, 35.91 points. Then in Super Bowl eleven, he had, which was just two years ago, a 27 point victory. So now we're getting down to the closer games, right? And it took a while because believe it or not, the top five closest Super Bowls are the first five Super Bowls of our league. We have not had a close Super Bowl. Uh, or any closer than 20 points, which is next up. That was Gus's win in Super Bowl 10 just a, uh, three years ago. Uh, that was a 20-point victory for him. After that, it gets a lot closer. In fact, it gets under 10 points. We've been, we haven't really had any other close Super Bowls since Super Bowl 5, uh, which we will get to in a little bit. But coming up in fifth on this list of top closest Super Bowls, we have Willie, who won in Super Bowl 2. That was a nine and a half point game. Then we had Willie again in Super Bowl four, coming in fourth, 5.65 points. Coming in third with a uh, 3.45 point win is Saheed when he won in 2014. Coming up in Super Bowl, or I'm sorry, in the second uh, closest game was Super Bowl one. That was Lewis when he won his first and only championship. That was a three-point game. So, believe it or not, we have had a closer game. And who is that? Our fearless commissioner. That was Super Bowl three, the fire-breathing rubber duckies. When the seventh-seeded fire-breathing rubber duckies beat the eighth-seeded ABC Easy is one, two, three. I believe that was one. Uh, and that was a 1.25-point game. Could you imagine? For all the marbles in our third year in, we thought it would only get closer. Uh, and it's been blowouts uh, for the past seven years. But that was a 159 to 157.75 point game. And that wraps it up. So, guys, we'll have one more recap video to celebrate either Manny or Saheed. Uh, we'll review Gus and Sam's third place game between brothers. And we'll see if me or Hector get the right to choose where they pick in next year's draft. Uh, we'll go over how all the money gets divided, uh, who won the most. I'll see if I can tally some things up, maybe uh, give people some information on how much money they won or lost or whatever. Yours truly, me, not winning anything, uh, lost 100. Spoiler alert. So did Lewis. But there are others that got some either in the weekly bonuses or in their final finishes that'll have at least something to brag about. So... Good luck to Manny and Saheed. Hope you all have an awesome Super Bowl. I hope it sets a record for the closest ever. I hope it's less than a point and you both have to wear your brown pants as you both shit yourselves watching it. It actually really might come down to Monday night. It is the Bills uh, versus... Uh, shit, who is it? I know it's the Bills and... Oh, the Bills and the Bengals. Bills and Bengals are playing. And they have players from each. So... It's going to be a great fucking game, and I hope it really is. It's going to come down to it. Uh, hopefully it's not a blowout like we've been having for the past seven years, and we can reverse course and have some fun. So, peace, punch, cap, and crunch, bitches.